Good morning, body of Christ. God bless you. Pastor Ronnie, this morning, uh, September 26, I believe it is, 2024. It's 9.32 in the morning. I'm getting ready to run out the door and go to work. Got to drive to San Jose. But I wanted to share something because, like I shared with you guys yesterday, that I've been reading... Um, Daniel chapter 9 and the whole reason behind me reading Daniel chapter 9 and how I wanted uh, people to have a better understanding of Daniel chapter 9 and why I was so adamant and instructive about it because I didn't really get into it because we was more talking about the trumpets. But the reason behind Daniel 9 and me sharing it with you guys and with the body of Christ and with the church last night was because I wanted people to focus on the fact that Daniel 9 was a prayer that Daniel was interceding on behalf of Israel and how I'm being led to intercede on behalf of Israel on and on behalf of um, America on behalf of uh, my family. It's very interesting. This guy with the lawnmower out here just did this the other day and they're out here again. And I always believe when there's something powerful coming in the message, the enemy will try to distract everybody. So please forgive me for this noise in the background, but I wanted to get this message out before I go to work. So Father, I pray that the word I'm preaching right now this morning will be louder than the noise of the world, the cares of the world, and not just that, but of the people's minds, Lord, and what they're dealing with and whatever's going on in their lives because the cares and the concerns of the world come to choke out the word of God. And we are raising up a standard right now, Father God, that this word will bring an understanding and a clarity to them to intercede for not just Israel, but for America and also for their families because they need Jesus, Lord. They need a healing. They need a deliverance. They need to be uh, set free of the bondage that they are in. America needs to be set free of the bondage that they are in. So Father God, right now, I thank you for the anointing on my tongue, for the words that are gonna proceed out of my mouth because they are scripture. I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So yesterday, as I was reading in Daniel chapter 9, one of the things that I wanted to really focus on was these scriptures and to kind of break them down for you because America doesn't realize it. And maybe some of your family members and maybe even yourself, if you really think about it, have fallen short and these curses may be coming upon you. And when you think about America and all the open doors of the different demonic activities that they're letting in, it is because of what God's word says. Remember, God means what he says and says what he means. And he watches his word to make sure it performs what he called it to do. So when we think about what Israel did, what the scriptures mean, we all want to say claim the blessings of the Lord. Oh, even Old Testament blessings, we want to claim them, but we don't want to understand that if you're going to claim it, what about the curses that come when you're being disobedient? What about the curses that come when you are not following the precepts, the statutes, and the commandments of what God had told us? So I want to share this with you because this is a powerful prayer. And a couple of years ago, I prayed this for my family and for America, like I shared yesterday, that I was doing this so that my family could be saved, so that America could, could be, get past COVID because a lot of COVID had a lot of uh, positive and negatives to it. Of course, it was a bad thing, but it, it brought some families closer together and some it broke apart. It brought a division, it brought all kinds of church, all this madness. So I was praying for America for, and this was the chapter that I was praying, Daniel 9. But I want to focus right here because I was reading this morning again, because I told you I was led to read this for 21 days. Today is day four. So 
as I read it, there was more expounded on it, and I really want to share it with you. So we're going to read Daniel chapter 9, verses 6 and 8, and I'm going to tell you why. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and all the people of the land. Verse 8. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. What you have to understand is we got uh, presidents, we got governors, and we got mayors, and all these folks have turned against the word of God. They have compromised the word of God. They have turned their backs on the word of God. They have done everything they could to take God out of America. So what was happening in Israel was the same thing. They were turning away from the prophets and the servants of God that were coming and warning them. So Daniel was interceding for them. Do you not know that God tells us to pray for our leaders? Because our leaders, like I said yesterday, people are starting to recognize that this presidency this year is not just about two people, but it's about good versus evil. And you have people that are in uh, the political realm that are noticing this now. And that's the thing people are understanding. So when you get into communism, communism is a bondage that controls the people. And whoever's over that, uh, that communist nation is running that nation the way they want. That's exactly how China is. They're a communist nation, and the, and the, he runs it the way he wants to run it. So now that's why we need to be praying for that. Now, again, when you think about the kings, the princes, and the governors, when you think about the president and the mayor, think about what's going on in your own family. What's going on with the father and the mother that is trickling down to the kids? If your father and your mother have no relationship with God, nine times out of 10, if the child does have one because they've been introduced to Jesus, they're having their own battles at home. Or what if the parents were once Christians, but now they're watering down the word to compromise the word and they're expressing this to their children. So we have a lot to understand what's going on here. Now let's look at verse uh, Daniel chapter nine, verse 11, 12, and 13. You are... You, ye, all Israel, have transgressed the law, even by departing that they might not obey the voice, thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, God. Verse 12. And he hath confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against the judges that judge us, the presidents, the governors, and the mayors, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem." Now, you got to understand, this war that's taking place is very broad. There is so many different Iran, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, Gaza, the West Bank. You got so much. Then you got where Russia's kind of su supplying Iran, and Iran is supplying Hezbollah and the Houthis and Yemen. So all these folks are against Israel. So there's a big calamity going on. But what do you think? People don't understand that if Iran considers Israel the little devil and considers the United States the big devil, then we're at whatever is going to. Past Israel is going to eventually make its way to the United States. 
But the United States has opened the door to a lot of demonic activity because of what they're doing by passing all these laws that are contrary to the Constitution and contrary to the Word of God. Now, I really want you to really, really, really get an understanding of something here. So as I'm sharing that with you, the cross-reference to that scripture is in Zechariah chapter uh, 12, where it talks about how uh, Israel is becoming a reproach to all the nations around them. And, and, and unfortunately, like the, the United States is divided against that one thing as well. But when you get into this uh, verse 13, I want to show you something. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayers before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. What is going on here in Deuteronomy? And I was sharing this really uh, in detail with the church or the body of Christ that follows me. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the first 14 scriptures are about the blessings that come upon the body of Christ that obeys the word of God. But verse 15 to 63, I believe it is, Oh, I'm sorry, verse 68. Those are all the curses. Now, you see how the curses outweigh the blessings. I just want to share something with you here. Deuteronomy chapter 8 at verse 15. But, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments as his and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now from 16 to 68, he's talking about all the curses that are going to come upon this nation. When you think about what's going on in our nation, when you look at all the, I mean, if you are a blood-bought, sanctified child of God, you are seeing our nation, our world has never been this messed up. You, have, you could see how this man of America, and that's the thing that people don't understand is that if we become a communist nation, you need to really understand this, that we are really going to be ran by the dictates of a communist mindset, which allows the devil to come in and run this nation the way he sees fit, because he's already got the doors open to um, pornography, trafficking, uh uh, what is that? Uh, to, to kill the children, abortion, the transgender, the homosexual, we got the perversion. We got anarchy. We got where people could walk in stores and steal and walk out and no one could stop them. The cops are not even really getting involved in the violence on the street. You need to see that all these things that God's been taking out of the schools, the, all these things, but there's a remnant there's a small remnant of us that are fighting against this, that are supporting Israel, that are fighting to stand up for our children, that are fighting for the rights of a Christian. And so you have to understand that this nation too has opened this door to all these curses and we see them happening. Guess what? In your family, if you are not walking according to the Bible, but you're walking around telling people, I am a Christian, and the person that, that's like, you don't look nothing like this Bible. You don't look nothing, oh, God is working on me. God is, is still working on me. I, I, I'm under construction. We use all these statements to say why we're living in sin. No. You're not, you're living in sin because you're choosing to disobey the word of God. And I know this because I did it for the first 10 years of my walk. 
Thank God for his mercy and grace when he grabbed me and said, pick a side and stay there. That's the same statement he said in Revelations. I wish that you were either hot nor cold, but since you're neither, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. So we have to understand that a lot of these things that are also happening in our families is because we have turned against the word of God. And so I'm really trying to get people to truly understand this morning the, 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 the burning passion I had to explain this chapter. And it's and if when you read the whole chapter, there's so much in it because now we're at the end of the Bible. Now I want to go to uh, verse uh, 16 really quick. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, and America, and my family, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and thy people, and America, and our families, are, have become a reproach to all that are, are about, uh, about us. And that's what happened in Zechariah chapter 12, how all these nations, including the United States, have come against Israel. But you have to understand that we got that same stuff going on in our nation. You got the Hamas people that are cheering them on and they're telling about the river to the sea and they're beating up those of us that are supporting Christians and supporting Israel. And we're trying to be, live a, a Christian life. The, the evil that has taken over our nation years ago, none of that would have been happening here because we was under the, the covering of the Lord. Do you not realize when the covering of the Lord left us, when they started this whole taking Christ and the Bible out of the schools and out of everything and out of the courts, what happened was people forget, and I share this really deeply as I come to a close because I really got to get to work, is that when a person gets married, the, the husband becomes the head covering of that wife and of that family. When the head covering is taken away, there's, there's oppression and everything that comes. You see it in a lot of families. When there's a, a, the husband leaves or there's a separation in the, in the marriage, what happens is that there's now depression, there's now torment, there's now sadness, there's all these things, all these spirits are making their way in. Well, when God told us, if you in Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14, if you do all these things that I command you, I will bless you. I will protect you. I will provide for you. Well, that the United States was the greatest nation in the world. And we supported Israel. So we was like the mirror of them. But once we started taking all that away and God, all, everything, the world got crazy. It got chaotic. The trip about the presidency is that it's just evil versus good. I don't care what side you're on. You got to start looking at things in the spirit, in your own families. What's going on in your family that looks very demonic and you're not calling it out, you're accepting it? Well, that's what America is doing. It's accepting the evil. It's asking us to compromise the word of God to accept the laws that are contrary to the word of God, but then we want to call ourselves one nation under God. We cannot be a nation under God if we are not under God following the Bible and the dictates of the Bible. You can't say your family is blood-bought, sanctified, set apart for the glory of Jesus Christ, but you're all living worldly lives. It's all over social media. People that I know claiming to be Christians, I, I just look at your social media page and say, you don't realize you may have got saved, but you never got converted. Let me explain that. See, this, he's adding to this. God's going to make me late. <laughs> and Luke chapter 21, I want to show you, show you Luke chapter 22. Verse 31, 
And the Lord, I want to read backwards. I'm going to read verse 34, 33 first, 33 and 34. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell you this, Peter, the cock shall not crow three days before thou shalt uh, deny me three times. You hear Peter's arrogance? I'm willing to do all. I'm willing to die. I'm willing to go to prison. Well, this is what happens in verse 31 and 32 of Luke 22. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now to grind Peter, because Peter was, was the chosen one. Peter's the one that heard from God when Jesus said, but who do you say I am? He said, you are Jesus, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father did. So the devil knew, uh-oh, this Peter guy, he's hearing from the Lord. This Ronnie guy, he's hearing from the Lord. This brother and sister, he's hearing from the Lord. But what happened was Peter had not been converted yet. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee. I've already prayed because I already knew you was going to fail. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. When all this stuff in verse 32 and 33, when he denied Jesus was broken, sin looked at Jesus, Jesus looked at him out of eye and said, I told you you were going to deny me. That crushed him. But Jesus was saying, but I'm praying that your faith will not fail you, that you will still believe that I am the living God. And he said that your faith fell not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. See, a lot of people get saved, but they never get converted. So if you don't get converted, you can't be living out the life of Christ that he's called you to because you're not really hearing from him because what you did was you might have did an emotional uh Sinner's prayer, as they call it, we don't call it the sinner's prayer. Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved. But it's a hard thing. And that was what Peter didn't have. So the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of Christians don't realize they think because they got saved that when the rapture comes, they're going to leave. No, what's going to happen is God is saying, remember what Jesus told his own folks? He said, I never knew you. Get away from me. And the men said, wait a minute, you taught in our synagogues, you ate with us, you hung out with us. He said, but I never knew you. Where did you come from? So those Christians will be left behind to prove their love to God in a worse way because they're going to say, you know what? We wasn't living right before. Look at where we're at now. We should have been listening. And this is what the Lord is using us to do now. So all that to go back to uh, Daniel 9 is this is why we need to be praying for Israel. This is why we should be praying for America. This is why we should be praying for our families because God might be using you and me to intercede for our families because he says, I need someone to stand in the gap. The Lord said, I'm looking for a strong man to stand in the gap, but I can't find any. You got some serious praying war mothers, praying for their family, praying for their husbands, while husbands out there acting a fool. But she had to take up the mantle because the man that was supposed to be there didn't do it. So I don't want to run down another rabbit trail, but that's, I really, I pray that if you caught the ending of this message, that you will go back and listen to it because it's very important that you hear it in its entirety so you can have an understanding of it. Really, that's the only reason. And for those of you on YouTube that see this, hit that like button. The, and I'm learning this whole algorithm thing. The reason why is because other people can see it. The thing is, people don't, they want to hear the truth, but they want to hear it broken down in a way that they understand. And God's given me that gift because God knows I ain't capable of doing this without him. Jesus made that clear in John 15. You can do nothing without me. So all glory back to him. But I just wanted to share this with you. I'm going to pray and then I truly got to go. 
So Father, in your most gracious name, thank you, Lord. I pray that when I spend my time with you in the morning and you give me something to expound on that was brought up in a service the night before, it brings such joy to me that I can be used by you to share a, a more opening dialogue and dialect with you to bring to the sons and daughters that you are calling, even to those who are not saved or to the backslider, to bring them back and say, you know what, I'm not living right as I'm supposed to. Father, forgive me. Open up my heart that you can come back in and dine with me. Or for the sinner who don't know Jesus and he feels or she feels that they're not good enough. You're not good enough. I'm not good enough. But there is a God in heaven that made Jesus to be the embodiment of himself in the flesh to die on the cross for you. And all he wants you to do is believe in him and have faith in him and endure until the very end and just trust that it may look dark, but there's a light inside of you. Just say, Jesus, I open up my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior and believe that Jesus will do it and you shall be saved. And then find you a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that will guide you the correct way. And you can reach out to us, to me, and we will guide you. We have a discipleship of women and a discipleship of men to help this process. And Father, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over the person listening to this message, that they will send this message to their entire family, that they can all have an understanding of this chapter in the Old Testament and the other chapter of the curses that are coming upon us, but to turn from our wicked ways, Lord, and to repent and go the opposite direction so we can walk back into the blessings and the covering of Jesus Christ. And I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.